Remember when I made a video about simplifying airbrushing? Well, let's talk about this, the brand new Ultra from Harder and Steenbeck. For many years, I'd been looking at ways to make airbrushing a much simpler process. You know the score. You buy one, you play with it for a bit, you get annoyed, you throw it in the drawer, and it's back to a brush. Welcome to the state of play, where today, I think I finally found my forever airbrush. Before I show you this, let's talk harder and steam back for a bit. Oh, and it's worth saying I bought this with my own money. There's quite a few airbrush brands you might know, from Badger to Iwata, Pache to new kids on the block like Galeri. I can't deny these guys make great brushes, but whilst their brushes get better, they tend to completely lose focus on the most important part of an airbrush. You. Yes. You. This is where I think Harder and Steenbeck are beginning to change the game. Their focus and ethos has been slowly moving from just making great airbrushes to turning you, us, into great airbrush artists. It's a very subtle semantic difference, but it's a big one. It starts with Warwick on the Harder and Steenbeck YouTube channel showing you how to be better with an airbrush and extends right into this new tool. If you saw my previous airbrushing video, you'll know I've strived to reduce or eliminate complex variables that just frustrate us or cause us to dump this tool in the nearest drawer. When I saw the new Ultra revealed, it looked like exactly what I'd been trying to achieve, simplifying the process and making it less frustrating. So can an airbrush make airbrushing easier. Let's start with taking this thing apart and putting it back together, something you might occasionally need to do for a deep clean. One thing that's a big difference is the cup has been redesigned to slot into the top of the airbrush thanks to a longer tube on the bottom. Now it just pulls out and pushes in, making both the cup and brush way easier to clean. No screw threads to clean, no ramming a cleaning brush down a hole. The back end screws off and this magic collar, which we'll talk about later, just slides off. Unscrew the needle collar and carefully slide out the needle. Then we can unscrew the nozzle cap and the nozzle just sits inside here, just like their other airbrushes. Now, the back end works differently to what you might be used to. In fact, I ended up having a video call with Warwick because it stumped me at first. I assumed, like all the other brushes I own, that this comes apart here. It doesn't. You unscrew the needle collar, then unscrew this second collar here. The back end slides out with the spring, and then the trigger just pulls out. Easy. It's less parts than I'm used to, but boy, it's much easier to take apart and reassemble. Okay, let's put this thing back together so I can show you two things that really impressed me. The first is this needle collar has been designed in such a clever way so you can slide the needle back in from pretty much any angle into a much wider hole. It guides the needle back in for you. And for someone like me with reading glasses always perched on my nose, this is amazing. You don't even want to know how many times I've missed the hole in the past because my eyes no longer work properly. The second thing is this limiting collar. You just literally hoop this over here, anywhere you want. When you screw on the back end, it pushes it automatically back into its correct position. Genius. Being honest, unless you slop paint everywhere over your airbrush like trying to feed a baby, you'll probably not need to take this thing apart that often. That's because it's also been designed to be easier to clean and flush. From what I understand, Harder and Steenbeck designed a whole new set of diamond tip tools to drill and mill the insides of this thing, moving seals deeper into the brush for simpler assembly, easier cleaning and better engineering. Okay, that's the new build. Pretty good so far. Much more beginner friendly and as a more experienced airbrusher, I can't say it's not welcomed by me too. What sets this airbrush apart from everything else is this. This central collar acts as a limiter to make different spray tasks much easier. And there's no mechanical parts on this at all. It's just a cleverly designed engineered ring. You'll remember I like a limiter just to make repetitive movements simpler. And they're great, but if we're honest, they're kind of random. It's really quite hard to get it in the exact same place every time. Once you start turning and clicking that thing, the numbers written on it, if it even has them, don't mean squat. 
And yes, you really should just learn trigger control with your finger. But then we should all use manual shift gearboxes. But I'd rather use an automatic any day of the week. Why shouldn't the car do all the work for me? That's exactly what the six settings on this new Ultra aim to do. Well, it's actually five. The sixth setting gives back full normal control. Like having an automatic and manual shift in a single car. The settings are Prime, Base, 1, 2 and 3. Then this open slot here is Normal Operation. Each setting limits how far back the trigger can be pulled and if I get in close you can see there's a little notch on the back of the trigger. When you pull this back this hits the collar and limits the trigger pull. When I turn the collar to the next setting, hopefully you can see that the way the collar has been engineered means each setting allows a different pullback distance. Actually, let's look at the collar on its own. You'll see the shape changes as it turns. Prime allows a larger trigger pull, letting out more paint, and 3 allows the least. Amazingly simple in its engineering, and I love great engineering, but incredibly powerful when working with paint. The one thing that was a little weird getting used to at first is that you have to press down the trigger. If not, it won't let you pull it back. I fully admit to being a bit unsure on the usefulness of this, but man, it actually makes it so much easier. There's no way to accidentally spit paint by pulling it back without air. We all know tip dry happens. Seriously, rings, holes, tip dry? Is there any way to talk about this brush without all the double entendres? Anyway, the nozzle cap on this has been designed for really simple tip dry cleaning. You literally just take a big brush with airbrush cleaner and just ram it into the holes. See what I mean? Okay, we know how it's assembled and how it works. Let's put this thing to use. You'll know I prefer to use paints that are already thin enough to spray because I'm lazy. Molotov One For All, Golden High Flow, inks and contrast paints. Any other paints, I start 50-50 with Golden Airbrush Medium and add more if needed, because I like things simplified. So let's use this thing to do what most of us do with an airbrush, Prime and a Zenithal. Before we start, there's one thing I wanted to bring up, pressure. From my previous video, you'll remember I prefer to keep my pressure around 30-35 and reduce it on the airbrush itself so I don't need to keep reaching down for the compressor. I use this fine pressure control valve on all my Harder and Steenbeck airbrushes, but no matter what I tried, I couldn't get this to work on the new Ultra. On a great suggestion from Warwick, I cleaned it, soaked it in warm water to effectively reset any seals that might have expanded, and I tightened the spring. I even went as far as buying a brand new one. Nothing worked. The trigger just gets jammed and won't pop back up, meaning it just continues to spray air constantly. At least for me. I could be doing something wrong, so if anyone figures out a way, I'm all ears. So I went back to the old way, which is this inline pressure valve. This works well enough, although I do find it a bit more cumbersome dangling from the bottom of the airbrush. Before we go on, there is one other thing I wanted to point out about Hard and Steenbeck. They've also actually thought about the process of spraying too. If you're spraying, where do you spray from? How far away? Well, they suggest a fist away. Put your fist between the model and the airbrush and spray from that distance. Obviously, this is not a hard and fast rule, but it's an excellent starting point. Right, now that's out of the way, we load in the first colour, turn the colour to prime and spray. Done. To clean out, we're going to quickly rinse with a squeezy bottle and load in some airbrush cleaner. Harder and Steenbeck says you can just rinse through with airbrush cleaner by turning the collar to full manual and pumping the trigger into a pot. And you can, but I found that's dependent on how much paint you have left in the cup, so I still prefer the squeezy then flush method. Once it's flushed, we load in the second colour, turn the collar around to base, use the fist distance again and do our main zenithal. Easy. At this point, with the paint still in the cup, I'm going to turn the colour to number one and get in closer to pick up some areas I want to have a bit more coverage. Again, a great suggestion by Harder and Steenbeck is to move in to two fingers away, so around here. And I can pick out some of the parts that I want. As before, we squeezy and flush. Okay, we've got a zenithal. Done. 
but I want some of these parts to be even lighter so I can slap some contrast type paints over them. So now I'm going to drop in some white ink thinned with a little matte varnish to make it stick better. I turn the collar around to number two and get in at around two finger lengths again and pick up the parts I want. You can stop here if you want, but at collar position three, you can get in even closer and pick up even smaller details. You should end up with something like this. I mean, depending on what model you're painting, of course. All that's left really is brushing on some contrast type paints, a few washes, and a few carefully placed highlights. To say I love this thing would be a bit of an understatement. It does, out of the box, the things I've been forcing my other airbrushes to do for nearly 15 years. And at under 100 euro, this has to be the most engineered, thought through, planned process airbrush on the market today. I like that Harder and Steenbeck have looked at miniature painters like us and seriously thought about how we use this tool and specifically developed a product to meet those exact needs. I'm not bashing at other brands here as they make fantastic brushes, but how many of them have spent any time attempting to get us mini painters to stop dumping our frustrating airbrushes back in a drawer? And let's face it, we've all done it. A big thank you to everyone who supports the channel and if you could comment, like or share, that would be great. You know, so YouTube doesn't dump the video into relative obscurity. That's the state of play for today. Happy spraying.